Oh, no, it was really... It's not... So, Zach, if you've watched Jordan Love this season, it's only uncharacteristic for the past, like, month and a half because he's been playing much better football. Yeah. You go back and, like, against the Broncos, against the Raiders, like, made those kind of throws where it's just like, all right, we're just going to chuck it down there and hope for the best. And yeah. it was unfortunate because, you know, they had time, they had the plays, they had the timeouts, but... I think he, it's... He said that. He's like, it's a mortal sin. You know, that's what his words are. He's like, a mortal sin. And, like, it's something he's going to learn from. Yeah, it's... he's. He, He's a young quarterback. Well, he's an old young quarterback, right? He's like 25, yeah. but he's it's his first year. Um, that's just a situation that you get better at as you mature as a QB, right? Where yeah. you don't feel in the in that situation. I think like if you're looking at a guy like Rodgers before him or a Tom Brady, and they've got like a minute on the clock and a couple timeouts. To them, that's a that's an eternity. They're yes. like, I got I got so much time to work with here. Young quarterback sees that and they're like, I got to make a play. I got to make a play right now to help my team. Yes, and that's where you see those mistakes. I think it's just it's hard to simulate those situations with the actual pressure and magnitude of it. Of course, it's a bad throw. Obviously, we saw Josh Allen with the game on the line. He tried to get one to Khalil Shakir in the back of the end zone. He kind of runs into his lineman there. He's going to win. Um, Baker Mayfield, that. game on the line, throws it to, to the Lions. So, like, three games kind of had those similar situations there. Yeah. And I think it's just young guy, give him time, let him understand those situations, and you can only practice those by playing in games and being in them. Which so. is why I'm like, that's why I was like, do it. I don't, whatever happened, of course, the Packers still ripped my heart out of my chest, but like, that's why you want to be in those situations because it's almost impossible to replicate them. So yeah. now that you do that and like, okay, Jordan Love now has experience and all those young guys are now experience being in the playoffs, winning a playoff game and nearly beating the number one seed in the divisional round. And like, that's kind of things go, okay, we've been there before. Now let's try to get better and get over that hump. And for the Packers, yeah, the future is incredibly bright. I'm super excited what they're going to do for this offseason. But, yeah, it's just the way that it ends. Oof. The the quarterback narrative always gets Patrick so, Mahomes. so skewed in the playoffs, right? Where Josh Allen, because the Bills didn't win that game. Yep. You're like, Josh Allen's actually not that good. Oh, my God. What did he do? Like sure. that, that sort of shit, right? CJ Stroud, though, he gets a pass because he's he's still young. Rookie. You know? But like the the Ravens shut him down, mm. played really well, and then got outplayed oh. by Brock Purdy for like the last eight minutes of a game. I wish there was just a better way to indicate how much of a a team effort it is in the playoffs versus yes. your quarterback. And like Baker Mayfield, he had the the two picks in that game. One was not his fault, right? It bounced off. Was it Mike Evans' hands that it was it a tip ball? I forget. The last pick, yeah. big fault. But he had like 350 passing yards, three passing touchdowns. Like if you're looking at what a quarterback did, he did a ton through the air with his arm, yeah. and it wasn't enough for the the Bucks because they got outplayed as a team. We put so much of it on the QBs in the postseason, but your yes. team's got to be good on every single level, <clears throat> and that includes your special teams. Like we saw, the only reason the Texans scored special teams punt uh, yep. return. And we saw the Packers missed a field goal, the Bills missed a field goal, and the Buccaneers missed a field goal. And e any of those kicks go in, it's possibly a different outcome. Sure. So it's it's unfair to put it all on the QBs at this point. And lo Love take is taking a lot of a lot of that heat, but like See, you could argue for for a lot of that game, he played as well as any quarterback in yeah. this weekend of football. I mean, some of the throws were absolutely insane. I think it was more like I, I saw it was like this whole season when Joe Barry, like the defense messed up. It was like crucified Joe Barry mm -hmm. because you've seen it a million times with Jordan Love. This is his first year as a starter. So yeah, yeah. there's a little bit more great now. Of course, there's already people who and they've had an anti Jordan Love agenda. Start Sean Clifford, all this garbage, whatever. <laughs> that, don't don't pay attention to that crap. But for Love there is a little bit more grace given because it's like, all right, first year starter has been playing really well. A lot of, I think the heat as a Packers fan went towards Carlson for missing the kick. Yeah. But then that also transferred a little floor, especially with that quote of, you know, I pray every single time that he's out there. 
And like that makes that look bad. And LaFleur has had issues with that before. And Basaccia, because that's now special teams that have cost us against the 49ers again. Because when sure. special teams was garbage a couple years ago, which eventually brought in Rich Basaccia, you don't need to block punt. So it's a number of things, but you're 100% correct. Because the defense, they played well. But that last drive, you know, they didn't get after Brock Purdy and they just kind of just like moved down the field and they scored. Yeah. So it's when it counts, the special teams, defense, offense, quarterback, et cetera, when it all comes together and like one of those pieces fail in the postseason, that could lose you a game. Brady was talking about what he and his his teammates did every week to prepare for games. And he, he said he would go through and cut up the film of like their their practice and put it together on all the things that like they did wrong and what they did well and it was a meeting he held players only outside of what the coaches do yep and he's like that he's like we're the guys out there playing and we have to be accountable for what we do on the field yeah so brady would lead those those meetings this is something like i didn't know but him putting like the the film together from the practices like to make sure like all the guys are on the same page and you wonder why like outside of bill and their regiment of just insane accountability in coaching you've got a quarterback doing the same and in a way that's probably more relatable to the guys yes, i'm sure they much course. rather be in that meeting with tom and looking through things than with bill <laughs> that type of thing i'm like dang like that's just another thing you learn later and you're like no yeah. wonder they were so good week in and week out always prepared seem like no what no matter what the situation was specifically at the end of games they had a, a plan for it. So Bo Melton from weeks ago was like, oh, Jordan Love is inviting all the receivers over like every Monday throughout the entire season. That turned out not to be true. Like literally they asked Jordan Love, they're like, wow, that's amazing. He You've twice. Done that? He's like, we've done it twice, <laughs> Like, which, which is amazing. And but even like that level of getting outside from the coaches and that gelling yeah. off the field and kind of getting that sense of knowing each other, like that's what made... Aaron Rodgers and Randall Cobb so good. That's what made and because yeah. well, one of my favorite plays in Packers history, right, is Randall Cobb on fourth down beating the Bears in week 17. That was an unscripted play. Like Randall Cobb did not run the route he was supposed to run. He just saw it and was like, I'm gonna run straight, threw his hand up, and then Rodgers hit him. That's the kind of relationship he had with Jordy. That's the kind of relationship he had with Javante. Yeah. You know, in terms of just like being able to understand one another. And I think that having that connection with a receiver is great. If you can have that kind of connection with the entire offense slash like all your receivers, yeah. that just goes even better to the results that will be eventually put on the field.